then the Maximus, the confessor. That wonderful father was living in uh, the years of uh, uh, King Heraclius, 640 after Christ, and he lived until uh, their, uh, the, the, the king's uh, sons and uh, sons and grandsons were living also. He was born in Constantinople from noble uh, parents and they were also respectful to God and uh, ever since he was young he had a good heart and he uh, always wanted to help other people and he had a lot of uh, righteousness and uh, other good uh, good uh, deeds from uh, uh, ever since he was very young. His uh, parents baptized him ever since uh, he was um, um, a little baby. And he was seeing, uh, uh, and they saw that he had a good heart and good, uh, uh, and a good heart and uh, good deeds and as he was small and as much as, as, much as he was getting up and growing up, he became better and better all the time, and he reached um, uh, perfections. They taught him, they took him to teachers, and they taught him very uh, a lot of a lot of uh, things. And seeing that he was very very bright, very clever that is, and. Uh, they started to teach him more and more, and he was taking the lessons very easily. So they put him to bigger um, science, science and uh, grammar and uh, poetry and uh, um, uh, philosophy and um, um, speaking very, uh, very well. And um, and he had a rhetorical uh, actions and uh, rhetorical rhetorical deeds. So that they uh, put him, they, he couldn't possibly choose what to, um, to, to teach him or what to go and uh, become perfect in, uh, in one of those because he was the best, he had best actions and best learning in everything that they, uh, they, they took him to, to learn, especially in philosophy because he became as perfect as he couldn't be more than that and but uh, they uh, they were fearing that this would maybe hurt his soul and it wouldn't be good for him and he only wanted to be pleasant to God so he took from all these lessons whatever goes good for his soul and goes good for God too and not more than that so that he wouldn't become um, very uh, uh, selfish and uh, he was taking care of his soul uh, as much as he could he was so humble and so good so good a person that uh, all the people would say that he was so respectful and so kind and he was so wist, uh, wise and righteous and he was humble as much as anybody could be and everybody respect him and admired him and uh, loved him for uh, all he had done and all he had said. Heraclius, the, the emperor, heard about his reputation and uh, as, as he was in uh, uh, Constantinople, and he was an emperor in Constantinople, he took him as his uh, right hand to write things and uh, uh, he told him to stay in the palace so that he would write whatever the, um, the king wanted him to write to, the kingdom things that um, the emperor wanted to, to, uh, fi to fix. And he, made, he told him to uh, write the, um, the official documents of the palace because nobody else in the whole emperor, empress was as good 
as Maximus want. And whatever he wanted to make a speech or to give an advice or uh, whatever necessary was uh, was for the kingdom, um, as Saint Maximus did it for the king. So the king uh, made him uh, as his first hand, but Maximum, Maximus was, was always wanted to become a monk, but because the king uh, told him to do so and he, the king wanted help, he couldn't possibly say no to the king, uh, and um, after a while, but after a while he left from the palace because he saw that uh, the 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 church was always in was in a trouble, in a big trouble under the heresy of the one willing uh, monks and people, and uh, he took this. Uh, this occasion as uh, mm, uh, as a, a prophecy as um, mm, he took this occasion as um, God. so he lied to the king and said that he wanted to go and help the church uh, under this heresies and help the church get rid of these heresies and he uh, he gradually he uh, practically wanted to live a, a simple life and no glory no have families no have any um bodily um enjoyment so he went to the monastery uh, which was called um golden city and he cut his hair he uh, put some uh, uh, gowns which were the most um, the most um, worse than the, it was the worst of any other and he wanted to make his uh, self uh, live in tough situations he didn't sleep he was praying all the night and uh, he wanted to make his um, flesh be uh, hard to, to have his flesh live hard in hardships and so that he would have his uh, soul be rested he was so fighting against all all good uh, actions he was fighting against having uh, a, a good life he wanted to to be in hardship that in in a, such a little time he had so many righteousness above all the other monks of the monastery and he had spiritual fights and uh, uh, he had a wonderful and angelic life the brothers of the monastery seeing that he was getting so uh, so um, uh, beautiful in the spiritual life and respecting him and of his righteousness and they called him and begged him so that they make him the first of the monastery because mm, the first of the monastery had uh, slept a few days before that but Saint Maximus, um, Maximus didn't want to do that he didn't want that burden on his uh, soul and on his uh, life and he didn't want to be the first of anything he wanted to be the last of an, of everyone but seeing that uh, his brothers always uh, begging him to do that uh, he didn't want to do uh, uh, anything for himself but he wanted to help uh, his brothers and he wanted them to have a good uh, spiritual life and his, their soul to be um, benefited for, from him. He accepted willing, unwillingly so that he become the first of the monastery. But uh, he wanted to help. He wanted to help only his brothers 
and he was so humble that he accepted unwillingly to become the first of the monks. He didn't want to make sins and he didn't do any and he wanted to have uh, when, when he had to be the first in monastery he had all those souls above him so that he could do the best that he, that he could do for their own safety and it was a great danger for him because uh, he had to be the example to every one of them and he wanted to uh, help them save their souls. So, every day and every night he didn't stop teaching them, he didn't stop being an example to them, he didn't stop to be so humble and sometimes he was harsh when he had to do uh, something to, do, to help him, to help them and he was always knowing what was good and necessary for his brothers, he did whatever best he could do to help them. Seeing that, uh, St. Maximus saw that this heresy of the one will uh, brothers and monks was getting uh, bad, uh, worse and worse every day, he was very sad and he was crying because he couldn't be able to, uh, to eliminate this heresy because every everywhere in this um, in that area uh, there were people who were preaching this heresy so he left the monastery and uh, wanted to go to Rome so that he could uh, do whatever he could to help eliminate that that heresy so he went to his brother's monks, my brother monks, and told them that he had to go and help uh, eliminate that heresy. They were very, very sad because they loved him and he was a very good father to them and he, they were always getting the best of him. But they couldn't um, be against his will because he always wanted to help um, eliminate the, the heresy but uh, so they let him they let him go and they didn't uh, make him any more sad, sad, sad and told him that he could go wherever the, he wanted uh, so that he could help um, the church under, uh, under uh, in helping eliminate the heresy because as they thought it was uh, God's will so that he could help the church. So he left the monastery and uh, he had a lot of hardship uh, walking in the street for days and days and days to go to Rome to the righteous and to the righteous people to help them not to fall in the heresy and find a way to uh, stop uh, this heresy become worse. King Heraclius uh, was uh, at, at first was uh, humble and uh, very respectful towards God and um, uh, managed to have a lot of victories against the Persians. But after a while, uh, the patriarch of the Acovites, Athanasius, uh, made him fall into a heresy because that man was a magician. Athanasius was a magician, and King Heraclius could not understand uh, what uh, he was doing, and he was uh, uh, Athanasius was a very bad person. But Heraclius didn't know that and he, was, he loved him a lot and thinking that Athanasius was a very good person, he told him that he would put him in the throne of Antiochia and beca become a patriarch there and in, with his bad deeds, uh, uh, his, 
but this made the king believe that he was good and he wanted he wanted to uh, bad things for the church in that heresy the patriarch of constantinople sergius was inside that heresy too and um, all the people who, who who didn't love uh, christ and thought that christ was all uh, had only one will and um, made bad things for the church and in alexandria there was uh, a patriarch too called kiros he who was into the heresy too so uh, to bring all these people to uh, that um, bad and dirt and dirty heresy they wrote in they wrote in pope uh, john who was in rome then to uh, communicate with them and be under their own uh, will the will of uh, all those people was to believe that um, Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ, had only one will. So uh, that wise person Maximus wanted to to go and teach the Pope uh, the truth, so that the Romans would not fall under the, this heresy, as all the East had done till now. <clears throat> there was so such a big confusion in the churches that all the, um, the archbishops and the lords become uh, become unwise and become unrespectful or irrespectful towards the church and the dogmas and always always preaching this heresy to everybody to everybody um, so uh, Sergius, who went in, uh, into that heresy, um, put put Pyrrhus, uh, put um, made the king Heraclius put Pyrrhus into the throne. So uh, uh, after that, the king uh, the king King Heraclius died, but uh, uh, Saint Maximus uh, was always in his heart and soul. To help the church, so he went to everybody so that he could help the people get rid of that bad heresy. As uh, Saint Maximus was going to Rome, he was teaching everywhere how to be respectful and how to be good in the dogma. Coming through Africa, he uh, gathered all the, the bishops there and told him the good truth what it uh, had to be done and get rid of the heresy and put them in the right uh, faith listening to him and seeing that he was very very righteous uh, and very wise and very logical and very uh, and very good in the soul uh, they believed in his um, preaches and his words and they made him, they, they understood that it was uh, just like an angel coming from the God. After that, they reached, he reached in Rome and he uh, started to uh, preach Macarius uh, Martinon, Martinus and uh, told him about the good dog, uh, dogma. Martinus was the new... Um, the new bishop uh, there and he um, he told him to make a synod so that so that they could uh, they could uh, find uh, the bad deeds of the heresy talk and discuss the bad actions and put them right they gathered to uh, the, all the, uh, the presidents of Italy gathered there and there were 150 people, and uh, their helpful and uh, their help, the biggest help of them was um, Maximus, Saint Maximus, and they put the orthodoxy right, and they put anathema to Sergius, Pyrrhus, Paul, Peter, and all the unworthy 
Archbishops of Constantinople, of Kyros and to Kyros Alexandria, and Athanasius of uh, Antiochia, or and all the others who had the bad dogma. So, uh, uh, Saint Maximus to uh, uh, control all these bad people and disrespectful people, and to make the uh, the lawful people the uh, the faithful people believe what was true and what was not, he wrote a lot of letters and sent them throughout the whole world so that the respectfulness and the true dogma was uh, in good hands and become uh, better and become so strong that all the people would know the true, the true dogma and turn back to, uh, to, res to respectfulness. He remained in Rome uh, for a long time and all the people who went there and asked him uh, a lot of things, he gave the right answer to them and made them all to uh, make them all and told all everybody to love God because his all respectfulness and his all uh, soul uh, his all soul and his all uh, deeds and actions was towards that area to respect and love God. And uh, he wrote a lot of letters and a lot of other documents so that uh, all the good, the, do the good dogma was written in the documents for all the, for all the people to uh, listen to that and write and uh, uh, read that and become uh, good in their actions and away from the heresies. He wrote a lot of documents to despise for the people who wanted to despise and to teach them to despise their bodily wills and all their um, bad uh, actions who uh, made this who made uh, who made the soul bad and after that he wanted to um, read those uh, words and to forgive uh, all his uh, enemies and he forgive the bad things to his enemies and love those uh, and love them as friends and to make them uh, make them and teach them how to love God <clears throat> they also uh, he also wrote uh, wisdom wise things and beautiful things and his documents were full of wisdom and they had beautiful meanings and truly uh, good examples for all the people who wanted to uh, love God. St. Maximus uh, explained uh, the uh, beautiful written uh, documents of St. Uh, Dionysius and see, seeing that they were so highly, um, so highly wise that nobody could listen to them, could understand them. He wrote them more specifically so that everybody would understand and follow the beautiful meanings of Saint Dionysius. Uh, so the uh, document actions and the written uh, actions and documents that uh, this saint was doing was so much and so many uh, so many documents that he wrote that uh, the, the uh, about the ortho the orthodoxy uh, of the orthodox uh, fight and uh, also about uh, some uh, um, advices about how to fight the demon when uh, the king constantos was in his ninth uh, year of uh, his kingdom and Constantus was um, a decessor of Heraclius. He had the the uh, the very uh, the very uh, uh, will the very big will uh, to become um, a one will uh, heresy um, king and bring all the people in this bad uh, dogma and 
listening that Rome did not uh, want to follow his uh, uh, orders and uh, listening and understanding that they had Maximus as a guide and a teacher and um, advisor, he commanded his soldiers to bring um, uh, Saint Maximus to his, uh, uh, along with his two uh, disciples, to uh, Constantinople to, uh, to ask them some things. Those two uh, disciples, students of Saint Maximus, were called Anastasius, both of them. Uh, one of them was uh, um, from uh, the Church of Rome, and he uh, also took power of Pope Martinos and the other bishops of uh, Italy uh, to uh, Constantinople, so uh, he would uh, send them to exile in Hersona and uh, to the other people to some other places. Uh, Saint Maximum, um, they took he took Saint Maximum, and he uh, made some tortures on uh, him, and beca because uh, he understood that Saint Maximus was holding the church in the right dogma, and he wanted everybody, um, the king wanted everybody to believe uh, the one will uh, uh, heresy. So he thought that uh, destroying. Uh, Saint Maximus, uh, he would do whatever he wanted with the church. So they, the, but these party people took uh, uh, Saint Maximus and made him walk without uh, shoes, and they uh, put uh, his uh, students were following uh, him and uh, seeing that uh, uh, he was doing bad actions to him uh, and made him uh, uh, and the one the king wanted uh, him to to die wanted saint maximus to die from all these bad uh, um, tortures that he was doing to him reaching constantinople he put him into the jail in a, a dark place away from his students so that he wouldn't have any human uh, help or comfort in his days of uh, of being in a cell so they took him uh, to um to the uh, judgment and the king uh, asked asked so that uh, asked him made some uh, bad uh, uh, thought so that he would do as much harm as he could do to uh, the saint. He wanted to put him to jail. He wanted to put him into a judgment with the false judges, and he didn't understand. He didn't even respect him because he was very, very old. He was more than uh, eighty years old, and he uh, wanted. He didn't even understand that he. He was uh, a monk, he was uh, wearing the gown of a monk, and he was a, he was a bishop. He didn't respect that he was a very good person, that he uh, was like an angel in, uh, on earth. And this bad, uh, bad king wanted to do as much harm as, as he could do to the saints. And he wanted uh, to uh, uh, he wanted to make him to make the saint believe that the heresy was uh, uh, better than uh, the dogma the, the true dogma that uh, Saint Maximus had, and he wanted to prove Saint Maximus with uh, uh, written documents. Uh, written uh, learning that uh, the king learning the king that. Uh, the person who uh, giving the dog the, the documents to uh, the saint uh, was beaten and he uh, was was beaten by the saint because the saint was truly a, a wise man and his uh, words and actions prove that the, the heresy
heresy was a bad dogma, it was out of the dogma and should stop, uh, he was very angry against the saints, so he uh, uh, put the saint, the saint, the saint to, thra to thra Thrace uh, in the land of disease. One of his disciples, one Anastasius, sent him to Pervin, and the other Anastasius sent him to Mesembrian. Even though uh, they were in exile, uh, the, the, the beautiful, these beautiful souls, St. Maximus, uh, didn't stop preaching the right dogma and the truth, and didn't uh, stop writing good things and the right dogma, and he was always, always, always um, uh, putting, putting, uh, putting um, a, a control to those one will, um, one will heresy people. In these uh, documents, in these letters uh, that the saint was sending everywhere he could, he was preaching and advising and putting the people through through uh, the true orthodoxy never stopped. Whatever happened, he never stopped. He wrote uh, so many documents. He um, he uh, made. Uh, he made the old and new scriptures uh, uh, so simple to understand, uh, to, to write and understand, and he was uh, um, making uh, the, uh, the documents of uh, Aero, Aero, uh, from Aries Pagos Dionysian uh, uh, as simple as he could so that the people would understand it. Um, Theologos, the, the documents of Theologos Gregorius, uh, this, uh, the, um, the Holy Scriptures about the liturgy, he explained uh, the meaning of the, whole, the Holy Mysteries. He wrote, uh, he wrote ascetic and um, moral reasons and moral documents. He wrote a lot of theological other documents. He wrote wise, uh, wise documents because this person was a truly wise man. He wanted everything to be good and beneficial for the soul of all the children of God. And uh, he was full of uh, divine grace and put this grace into the documents. So the people would start saying that he was a new Chrysostomus. After a lot of years, King Constance, uh, thought to put a test to the saint again as uh, he wanted him to uh, be repentful for what he had uh, been tortured by in the exile and come to the, the king's will. So he sent uh, his soldiers to bring the old person, the old uh, saint, to uh, and his um, uh, disciples to Anastasius with great honors and take uh, to bring them back uh, back to Constantinople again but when and when he put he get them to Constantinople again he put some wise people priests and uh, archbishops and lords to try to make the uh, the saint change his mind towards the bad things but they couldn't uh, do anything to the saint because the saint was uh, wiser from uh, all of them and they couldn't make him uh, change to the bad actions, to the bad uh, words and deeds and the heresies, neither with uh, words, neither with threats and couldn't uh, um, beat him, couldn't win him, beat him in any, in any way. So uh, the, uh, unri the, um, the bad uh, king made him whip the saint and the other two disciples to, uh, to make them ridiculous throughout the, the whole Constantinople, to cut their hands and their, and their tongues. So the, the priests, uh, the, um, 
the the person of uh, the mayor of the city uh, put the saint and his uh, disciple come to the uh, judgment uh, place to uh, uh, to the judgment place in Constantinople and four people put saint maximums uh, uh, started hitting saint maximus so unmercifully so badly so uh, uh, so badly that nobody could put a mercy uh, of uh, so that nobody could understand how bad this uh, mayor was hitting the uh, the holy man who was so old and he was uh, his uh, whole body was so um so tortured in his old uh, old age and uh, he made him so so uh, hurt so much and he was beating him so much so that his whole body and the whole soil and under the same was uh, uh, turn uh, turn red from the uh, the holy man's blood and all the, all the body all the parts of his body or his um his whole uh, being was so much so hurt, so hurt that he was the 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 saint was all a big uh, a big wound, not not a person, not a, a body anymore, but a, a very big good. So the next day, that un, unrightful king made the um, made uh, the, the made uh, put another person to hit. To hit the old man so much, and his two disciple that, uh, and he didn't have any sympathy against the old man, and then, and, and uh, make them they they hurt them so much they couldn't even breathe. Especially the old man because he was more than eighty years old and couldn't possibly endure so much uh, hate and so much hitting. The next day, they put the saints again into the judgment, and they were so black and so swollen from the martyrdom that uh, their their body was full it was a big wound, and uh, from their body was uh, a was coming a, a bad smell so much. So big, so big. Uh, uh, the smell was that nobody uh, around them could uh, uh, could um, could smell it and breathe properly. Even though uh, those bad people wouldn't respect the saints, wouldn't uh, just understand that they sh should stop. They couldn't have any good feeling their hearts into their hearts for those uh, for those saints, but they gave orders to be more and more hurt and more tortured so that they could die into the martyrdom until they uh, put them to death completely and uh, uh, especially the old the old maximus the old saint maximus uh, because they hated the king hated him so much that he didn't want that tongue, the saint's tongue, to be uh, to be speaking again, and uh, uh, didn't want them to be um, controlled by the saint, by the saint. But the uh, Almighty God, who gives uh, light to the blind, and He gives hearing to the deaf, and He gives speaking to the non-speakers he uh, can do god can do whatever he wants so he uh, uh, he miraculously made the saint speak after the cutting of his tongue so that he could um control the people the bad people for their for their actions 
they hated the, 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 uh, the saint so much for being able to talk without a tongue and they wanted to hurt him more. The first of his disciples, Anastasius, uh, they cut the, the, his tongue also and he uh, and, and the first uh, Saint Anastasius was speaking without his tongue also as much as uh, old Maximus, Mums Maximus did and they were preaching the truth and were talking to other people about the truth and the truth dogma and uh, was uh, controlling the bad uh, the bad dogma and the bad uh, people more than that so they took the saints and cut their right hands these unrighteous people and after that they they were dragging the saints into the marketplace and they were uh, doing more bad actions to them um, playing and um, playing and uh, playing with them and seeing that uh, these people uh, these saints wouldn't uh, wouldn't die even though they did so many uh, martyrdom on them on them they sent them they exiled them to Lazikin and the other Anastasians Anastasius and uh, uh, to another place but they didn't uh, send all those three to one uh, place or to different places so that they wouldn't have any comfort uh, to one another. So the, the three saints went to the exiles that they were sending them uh, with no uh, clothes on them, with no shoes on them, no uh, bread to eat, no water to drink and none, none that they could uh, help their uh, bodies be better and they were uh, they were as hurt as martyrdom as uh, tortured as they could do their martyrdom was uh, great but the divine grace the divine grace didn't leave this uh, unrightful or un unrightful king without a payment so that uh, uh, the, pe the people of uh, Constantinople hated him so much for his bad actions and uh, he was fearing that they could take him and uh, put him to death so he uh, uh, took uh, the king took his uh, wife and uh, their and kids and went to Syracuse in Sicilia so that he would uh, not be in the hands of the Constantinople people because he was fearing that they would put him to death. So he went to Sicily and one day he went into the bathroom to wash himself and one of the servants who was um, who, who knew what he had done to the three uh, three saints uh, put a big box a, a, a big uh, box and and hit the king so much in his skull in his head so that uh, that bad king uh, uh, lost his life after the death of Constantus uh, in on the throne it was the son of Constant is his son Constantine and he had with him the brothers of Heraclius his brothers Heraclius and Tiberius he was fearing that he would have the same end as his father he gathered the saints fathers and made the uh, holy sixth uh, ecumenical synodus and he um, proclaimed the two wills and two uh, actions and two um, and, and two, two 
and and the Christ still um two natures the God and the person and put uh, anathema on the one will uh, uh, one will heretic, heretic heretic people the same uh, uh, Macarius, uh, Macar the Macarius uh, Papas uh, Pope Agathon did the same thing in Rome, and uh, um, who, and uh, Pope uh, Pope Agathon became Archbishop in Rome after after the Saint Martinus. Uh, when they were taking uh, to exile uh, Saint Maximus to exile, he had so much hardship and so much uh, uh, bad things to through all his bodies, and uh, his whole body was full of wounds, and he was very weak because he was very old, and he couldn't uh, he wouldn't be more. Um, more weak than that, so he couldn't even be able to ride a horse. So they made a basket with uh, uh, some some ropes, and they put the poor thing, the poor saint, into the basket, and uh, brought him into uh, Laziki, uh, a, a castle in Laziki, which was called Schematarian and let him there in prison with no food, no clothing, no help, no nothing. They put his two uh, students away from each other and uh, the, 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 the younger of those took him to Thrace in a, um, a, de a desert castle and he was so tortured from that uh, that uh, that walking all the time, and he lived just a few days in the exiles, and then in the exile, and then died. The other Anastasia, Anastasius was uh, uh, taken to exile in the land of the Albanians, and he was so tortured, and for twenty years that he died also and went to the Lord. The third, Max, the third one, the third saint, Saint Maximus, uh, lived three more years in the schematarium. Um, he was uh, helping itself, uh, and he had only one hand, and he couldn't uh, do all he, the needs of his body uh, by one hand. He was sick and uh, so old that after a lot, a lot of years, and the martyrdom that he had, he saw a divine, a divine um, person which, in which uh, our Lord Jesus Christ called him to uh, go to the, uh, the upper land, the upper land to the heavens, and told him that the, the day that he went to the heavens, that was in the 21st, 31st of January, uh, in which in, this day, in that day he went up to the heavens. This divine person, who was nothing more than uh, a worldly and an earthly angel, in the tumor, in the tumor, in the grave, which in which they put the same, the same, the saint's body. During the night, they saw three candles lit on it, uh, who were so lit, so with so beautiful light that all this place was uh, uh, so lit that it was just like it was a day. And they saw, uh, they understood that the saint found the found uh, so much glory in. Uh, uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ, that everybody understood that this person became a very big saint. So let us give glory and honor and believing and love 
to the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. Amen.